Hey guys, welcome back. We're still in unit 1.2. I know it's a bit of a longer unit, I apologize. Um, chemistry and living systems. Today we're going to be looking at part five, which is just talking about carbon compounds and some of the properties of carbon that allows it to be so amazing for living things. Um, it should be a pretty short section, so let's just get going, shall we? There we go. Oops. Oh, wait. I fix that. There we go. So if we're going to talk about carbon compounds, especially in relation to life, we have to mention something called organic chemistry. Now organic chemistry is the study of all compounds that contain bonds between carbon atoms. So a lot of these molecules can sometimes, certain ones I should say, can sometimes be called hydrocarbons because they do have a lot of carbon and a lot of hydrogen associated with them. Um, that's just the bare definition of organic chemistry. It doesn't mean all organic compounds are essential for life in terms of what's studied in organic chemistry, but a lot of the ones that we talk about could easily be classified underneath that umbrella term. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the properties of, or of carbon. Carbon has four electrons in its outermost orbital, or the energy level, not the true orbital, but you know. It has, as you see in the picture, we have carbon here. It's got two electrons in its inner energy level, and one, two, three, four in its outermost energy level. We call the outermost electrons valence electrons. And because it can hold up to eight valence electrons, but it only has four, that means it can form up to four bonds with other atoms. And that's why we see it's bonded to four car, or sorry, four hydrogen. Hydrogen can only form one bond. So to accommodate all four possible bonds that carbon can form, we have four hydrogen, so that makes one bond, that makes one bond, that makes one bond, and that makes one bond. And since they're covalently bonded, that means that the carbon and hydrogen each have access to those shared hydrogen, sorry, shared electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, even when you see it in terms of the ball and stick diagrams like this, the sticks are the bonds. So one circle, one ball, would be a carbon atom and then one, two, three, four bonds coming off of it. All right, let's talk a little bit about carbon to carbon bonds. Carbon is able to form to other carbon atoms and because of their ability to make four bonds and to form bonds with each other, this is actually what allows it to make these really, 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 really long chain molecules, what we call macromolecules. And that's what makes it so important for life because a lot of the essential macromolecules that our cells need, that we need, are because of, or are made because carbon is able to form these large molecules. Um, a cell is many, 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 many times larger than a single atom. And the reason why we can form cells and create cells and make cells is because we have these long molecules such as lipids and carbohydrates that can actually come together and form this larger structure. Uh, carbon can form single, double, or triple bonds. Um, as you can see here, it can form, it can always have up to four bonds, but between it or other molecules, it can form single, double, or triple. So we see there's one bond between these two carbons. This carbon has a single bond with each carbon on either side of it. And here it has single bonds with all four carbons around it. It still has four bonds, it's just four bonds with carbons. And then it can keep branching and stretching from there. It can also form double bonds between carbons. So if you're wondering how this kind of works, instead of in a covalently bonded system, each atom donating one electron to that shared zone, they would each donate two. So that since they're each donating two electrons, that would form a double bond. Now, if we look at this red carbon here, 
in the double bond section, it still has four bonds. It has one between this and the carbon on the right, one between the carbon and the hydrogen, and two between it and the carbon on the left. So one, two, three, four, still four bonds. Sometimes they can even form triple bonds. So that is one, two, three bonds between the two carbon atoms. So in this case, since it's a triple bond, each carbon is donating three bonds to that zone of sharing. So one, two, three, and it still has a fourth bond it can form on the other side. All right, carbon compounds. So as we said, we can call these things macromolecules. Macro means big or large, and then, well, we know what molecules are. So what macromolecules are, are these really big long chain molecules. Now they are made up of smaller subunits called monomers. Mono means single, and meros means part. So it's one part of a larger structure. When we, what happens though is we can take these monomers and we can bond them together to form a bigger structure, which we call a polymer. Poly meaning many, and again, meros meaning parts. So it's many parts. So monomer is one part, and when we bond a whole bunch of these monomers together, we have a bigger structure that's made of many parts that are bonded together, so polymer. Since we are forming a polymer, we call the process of attaching the monomers, of bonding them together, we call it polymerization. So the process in one, which large macromolecules are made by joining smaller ones together. Oh, sorry, I try to make it through there without yawning. Think of it like Legos. A Lego is a small piece. By its own, it's not very big. But if I take that one Lego, and stick another one to it and attach another and another and another. Soon I have a big structure made all out of Legos. Maybe I have a thousand Legos that I put together to make this big structure. One individual Lego is a monomer, but the entire structure that all of them came together to form, that would be the polymer. It's made out of these smaller parts, but the parts are still attached to each other. They're still bonded together to make this larger thing. There are four main types of macromolecules that we're actually going to talk about in our next section of notes. So these are four macromolecules that are essential for life. It does mean that these are the only macromolecules but these are the four main ones that are essential for living things. So they include carbohydrates, they include lipids, and proteins, and nucleic acids. Now, I'm not going to get into those now because that's our entire part six notes is all based on defining those and looking at those. All right, so some additional resources. Like I said, this was a super sh short section, wasn't it? So the first one is going to be um, a science in pajamas videos. Uh, just kind of looking at carbon molecules, doing a very quick synopsis on what we kind of discussed here. Um, do, 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 back. And then some other videos to kind of go into more detail about. We have edu creations, looking at the properties of carbon. And then we also have the Khan Academy, carbon as a building block of life. So again, good videos to kind of give you a little more information, explain it in different ways to help you understand it. But yeah, um, the, I will post the link for the actual Prezi in the description of this video. This way you have access to the additional resources. Um, but in the meantime, if you guys have questions, if you're not quite understanding something, definitely um, give me a shout through Google Classroom, email, or in class. But in the meantime, you guys, stay awesome, stay curious, and most importantly, stay safe and healthy. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.